Maya Lan is in the final stages of packing up her house. Okay, Mika, mm -hmm. so I need you to um, take the posters off and over there. In just a few days, Maya and her daughter Mika will leave their home in Israel for a new country, a life-changing decision that hasn't come lightly. Well, I cry every day. I'm leaving her out of fear and I'm leaving the place I love. It's, it's a terrible feeling. It's a really terrible feeling. Heavy? Good. Maya Lan was born here, but the recent election of the most right-wing and religiously conservative government in Israel's history has her scared. To me, the worst, a worst nightmare that could possibly be is a situation where the people um, who, are making, who are taking my tax money are making laws against my rights, and that's what's happening right now. Hi! How's it going? So she's applied for residency in Cyprus, already buying a new house with a new job and new school. And she says they're not the only ones choosing to leave Israel. In my circle, I would say I know, in my close circle, I know at least 10 families who are moving. Uh, some have moved already. Spain, Italy, France, Thailand, uh, everywhere. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's plan to overhaul the country's judiciary has caused a deep rift inside the Jewish state. The changes target the country's highest court, the Supreme Court of Justice, and could give the parliament control over selecting future Supreme Court appointments, a process that's currently dominated by sitting judges. It'll also allow the Israeli parliament the ability to overturn Supreme Court decisions decisions with a simple majority vote. A wave of demonstrations has swept across the country by opponents who fear the legal changes will give the government unchecked power and open the door for extremist members of the coalition to make laws targeting minorities that can't be blocked by the courts. The fear of not knowing is what really scares me. That's what drives me. I'm worried that, like, the Israel we know today won't be the Israel in 10 years. Every Saturday for the last 34 weeks, that's more than seven months, these people have turned out in their tens, sometimes hundreds of thousands to protest. They say it's a revolution. Aharon Barak served on the bench of the Supreme Court for 28 years, 11 of them as Chief Justice. He's widely credited with helping shape Israel's current judicial system, including empowering courts to strike down laws it deems unconstitutional. He too believes the proposed changes will erode the court's power. Personally, it means a death penalty. For me, you will have a situation in which Israel ceases to be a democracy. Because instead of three, uh, separation of powers, we will have only one, the prime minister. And when you have full power, you know what, what happens when one person has full power. Full power. Then it's dictatorship. The retired justice is a Holocaust survivor, smuggled to safety in a sack and sheltered by farmers when Nazi soldiers occupied his home in Lithuania. It's this experience that shaped his judicial approach. And so the existence of rights of individuals, the dignity of individuals, for me is a very, very important aspect in my judicial philosophy. His opponents argue the court is stacked with left-leaning justices and that the overhaul is necessary because it currently makes decisions about Israel's future that should only be made by the government that's democratically elected. It's not answerable to the people and um, it gives unlimited powers, unchecked powers, to an institution that, has, that never faces elections and that does not act according to law. But who holds the government to account if they're then making discriminatory laws or laws violating human rights? 
The answer is elections, and it'll get overturned. In July, Israel's parliament, the Knesset, passed the first stage of the judicial changes, stripping the Supreme Court of the power to strike down government decisions it considers unreasonable. Tomorrow, the Supreme Court will hold a historic hearing on arguments against the new legislation brought forth by human rights groups and opposing lawmakers. It could set the government and the court against each other. You are describing a constitutional crisis. Constitutional crisis is the situation where there is a disagreement regarding the, uh, the decision, the final decision maker. The next stage in the crisis is where um, the court gives a specific order and um, bureaucrats, the army, the police have a choice of either obeying orders from the relevant minister or from the government acting according to law, or obeying the orders given by the court within its self-defined powers. And at that point, there's chaos. Maya Lan isn't waiting for that to happen. As she checks in her bags and her dog Blueberry at the Tel Aviv airport, there's sturdy resolve tinged with trepidation. As I said, I love this place and it's not exactly uh, I'm leaving. I feel like I'm, being, I'm, I'm pushed out, but uh, I know it's the right thing to do and I'm happy it's Cyprus. Bye!